I, I don't, I really don't think I've ever seen a Chatoyant Emerald. A first, because it's like a jigsaw puzzle in a way. As you build your collection, then when you look at them all together, it's amazing. Yeah. The clarity on this one is awesome. Am I allowed to put light on this? That's like a kind of creepy eye. Hey guys, welcome to another unboxing. We've got one of our favorite guests here, Bill. He has an amazing collection full of so many different items and he's here to show us a little bit of it today. Yes, I, I think it's a, like an obsessive compulsive <laughs> disorder. Uh, I love gemstones. <laughs> First box. All right, let's see. Mm. Oh, oh my goodness, look <laughs> at that. There's a label on the bag, so I know what it is. But that's super rare. So this is an aquamarine. It's from Sri Lanka. It's 590 carats, which is whopping. And it's a cat's eye aquamarine. Yes, ma'am. This is a star aquamarine from Tanzania. Wow. Aquamarines are beautiful stones on their own, but with optical treasures, it's even better. You have chatoyancy and asterism. So chatoyancy, or commonly known as the cat's eye effect, is where you have numerous parallel inclusions, can be a variety of materials, but they're all going in the same direction, and light is reflected off of those inclusions. See that line? That line is actually perpendicular to the inclusion. And did you know that um, chatoyancy actually is French for eye of the cat? Oh, like le chat. Yes. Yes. And what you have in asterism or a star-like effect is you essentially have that but in intersecting direction. So you can have a four-rayed star. Six is the most common. Six is what we have here. You can even have a 12-rayed star. But what's really crazy is aquamarine is usually really clean. Yes. It's a type one clarity stone, which means it's pretty common to be seen without any inclusions or very few inclusions. And so to have enough inclusions to create this eye or this star effect is just really fun and special. I'm not sure I've ever seen any type of chatoyant or star aquamarine ever. So that's really cool. And for you to not have not seen one as many gemstones I've as seen you've a lot seen. Of gems. <laughs> Sometimes I like to find the biggest stones of things, you know, that yeah. you can find, and this is the biggest cat's eye I've ever seen, so. It's amazing. What do you think the odds are that we might have another cat's eye of the barrel family? So you've got morganite, emerald, goshenite, heliodor. I'm trying to think if I have ever seen a cat's eye of any of those. I don't think that I have. Maybe another box? Okay. Wow. <laughs> okay, so that's a lot. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> what about a green one? Well, this is the bright green one. Are you telling me it's an emerald? <laughs> yep. That's a sharp eye. We've talked a lot on this channel about the life of the interior of an emerald. It's known for its inclusion, but I've, I don't, I really don't think I've ever seen a Chatoyant Emerald. Right, a first. What is required to make a Chatoyant Stone is a bunch of parallel inclusions that nothing gets in the way of. Typically, Emerald has so many inclusions that it, you're not really gonna allow for that. That's so interesting, isn't it? Imagine the space inside it has to be perfect in order to get the, the symmetry you need yes. to see the chatoyancy. I think I might want to play a little bit of a guessing game. Oh, that's a great idea. So we've got emerald there. This looks like rose quartz, maybe? Yes, ma'am. The clarity on this one is awesome. It's transparent, but it's still like a little Hazy. bit hazy. But the star is very sharp. Yes, the star is amazing. And you can see that it moves along with the flashlight. If you're looking at Simulants, one way to tell is how fixed the star is on the stone because typically it's not going to move with that light as a natural one would. Is this kyanite? Yes, ma'am. Kyanite typically has this really like striated effect. It's a blue stone, but the striations are this whitish kind of material. One of the things it's known for is its directional hardness. And so you have just different things happening at different directional planes. And so I guess it just doesn't super surprise me that you would have the cat's eye because 
You have a lot of things going in one direction. Oh, good point. <laughs> that makes sense. But there's another blue stone in there that is one of my favorites. That one? Yeah, because okay. it's just absolutely beautiful. It's stunning. I'm trying to guess at what this is, and I don't, I don't know that I know. I think maybe neon might set off a... Appetite? Uh, yeah. Wow. Blue Appetite or Neon Appetite is known for that really vibrant neon type of blue color. So common inclusions in Cat's Eye Appetite could be mica, it could be amphibole. And, but I think it's so interesting, the thought process that different elements are causing the inclusions in different stones. Yeah. And it's not, it's not all the same thing. No but they still have the same effect, yeah. which is what's amazing yeah. somehow. Sometimes you have hollow tubes. Sometimes you have really fibrous crystal strands. And actually, rutile is a good example of that. So this is rutilated quartz, and you can see that golden material is rutile. You can see how really pretty and fibrous, almost looks like spun gold. But rutilated quartz is not often chatoyant. Or, and it doesn't often have a star effect, which I find super interesting. Yes. Wow, look at that. So actually, this is a great representation of how the eye is perpendicular to the inclusions because you can see the inclusions so clearly. Okay, I'm gonna guess this one's a garnet. Yes, ma'am. So this is a star garnet. This is a four-rayed star, really large, 32 carats. Mm -hmm. All garnets, they're part of an isomorphous series, so they have kind of a blend of the various varieties. But probably this is mostly an almondine garnet because almondine garnets are known for their intersecting needle inclusions. That's pretty cool. I actually happen to like four-rayed stars. I have another favorite. Okay. Are you, are you ready for I that? I always like to see your favorites. Hmm. It's pinkish red. Rhodonite or rhodochrosite? Rhodonite. Yeah, that is so pretty. Rhodonite's a really interesting stone. It's known for this like black veining, but this does have some white patches for sure. Also, uh, rhodonite can be beautiful uh, and very clean, but only in a, a small a tier of yes. product. The clean, high quality rhodonite that I've seen that's fasted, they're very small carat weights. Mm. So let's look at that mm. pair of ovals. It's common that like uh, a half of a stone looks like a different color. As we'll see in these, one side looks dark and one side looks light. This is spectralite, which is a type of labradorite. It's more of a gem quality, fine variety of labradorite. Originally comes from Finland. You know, labradorite is known for the parallel layers, the different ways that light interacts within it. You can see those fractures, but these are really pretty. You no, know, it's interesting that somehow, the, as we look at the varieties of gemstones that have asterism or chatoyancy, I mean, it's a lot of different gems. It's a lot. You think of inclusion sort of as randomly occurring here and there into different amounts, but to, to have where the inclusion actually creates a special effect is just um, really unusual. Let's see, what about a blue one? Yes, I was thinking a, a sapphire. How about a star sapphire? So sapphires are actually known for their particular inclusion called silk. And so silk is when you have intersecting rutile inclusions, which are needle-like inclusions. Sapphire is a type of corundum. It's in the trigonal crystal system. If you look at a typical crystal habit of sapphire, it kind of grows in a triangular or hexagonal form. You can see in the star mimicking of the crystal structure, which I think is really cool. I know that star sapphires have been treasured for centuries, but I don't know how far back or when the first one made its big splash somehow. If I had to guess pretty far back, Pliny the Elder, I believe, has writings, which, you know, that was in like the late first century. And he has writings about star gems. Ancient Egyptians used to really value chatoyant gems in particular. The Book of the Dead refers to chatoyant gems as protective amulets. But where did they get a flashlight? <laughs> the ancient Greeks referred to star gems as the Asteria, which sounds like a little bit whimsical. And they said, particularly for six rayed stars, the three arms represented faith, hope, and destiny. I love that. There's a cat's eye kunzite. 
You know I like kunzite. So kunzite's a type of spodumene. Am I allowed to put light on this? Yeah, I think so. Okay. It's not gonna fade that quickly. Okay, so kunzite is subject to fading upon prolonged exposure to light. So I wanted to ask yes. before <laughs> causing anything to happen to his stone. As you can see, it's a really, really, really pale pink color. Kunzite can be anything from pink to purplish, light purple. How do you feel about another box full? I love it. Okay, all right, let's see. Okay. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> so it looks like that's an appetite. Yes, ma'am. So we, we talked about neon appetite earlier. Ooh, sharp eye. That is so sharp. You can see the inclusions going perpendicular to the eye, parallel to each other. And look at that green right through there. That's such a pretty green color. Corderite, also known as iolite. I love iolite. I love iolite. I think it's a really cool stone. A lot going on in iolite, particularly in the different crystallographic directions. Just crazy, you have a white gem and it's an even whiter eye. Yeah. I'm kind of intrigued by fibrolite. When you think of chatoyancy or asterism, you think of long fibrous inclusions. Now, I've never heard of fibrolite, but I just imagine it has lots of fibers in it. But that's gorgeous. It's like a really nice yeah. grayish brown color with a really nice sharp white eye. Fibrolite is actually another name for silimonite. Actually, cat's eye silimonite was the first of my collection. And I bought it years ago before the big find in India, and it was expensive. And then prices dropped because of the find in India. And now you can get a, a really affordable cat's eye silimonite. But at one time, that was one of the most rare gemstones that there was. Interesting. And I would encourage everybody, if you want to start collecting, silimonite's a great way to go. It's affordable, and you can see if you like it, and, and the eyes are very nice, and uh, you get that bicolor effect on many of them, too. So I think silimonite's a great place to start. It's a polymorph, so same chemical composition, comes in a different form as andalusite and kyanite. Yes, ma'am. This is a little different from a rutile perspective. This is metallic. This yeah. is the rutile needle itself. High titanium content. Yeah. Look at that. And then the eye is like, I mean, that's the yellow. That's like a kind of creepy eye. That could be in like a Terminator movie. But it is a metallic luster, right? Oh yeah, super metallic. And I don't know how many cat's eyes are in a metallic luster stone. Probably there's more. No, because honestly, so many of them are opaque. Yes, exactly. That's really interesting. This is really fun to me because it's like a jigsaw puzzle in a way. You're collecting, you know, each time you get to put a piece in, like I don't have this one, ah, and then you put the piece in the jigsaw puzzle and it's so satisfying. And so somehow as you build your collection, it's just really fun. And, and then when you look at them all together, it's amazing what you can do over the number of years that you collect things. Yes, if you have any collecting questions, ask Bill in the comments <laughs> because he is a master collector as you can see. I really like diopside. So I wanna get this star diopside out. Typically with diopside, you're gonna have four rayed stars based off of the inclusions and the crystal structure. How about feldspar? Oh, okay, feldspar is really complex. You've got lots of things going on in the interior. Well, this is like a pretty brown color. Wow. I wonder what the inclusions are in the feldspar. In the cat's eye, it looked like there was reddish. I definitely see the red in there. It's probably iron oxide impurity. So that would make sense. Like rust would be reddish, rust, right? Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Bill, I could look at these all day. But now, as you know, on this channel, we always take a closer look. And so we have to pick our favorites. I have to say the Star Aquamarine is my favorite just because aquamarine is often so clean. I really haven't seen a phenomenal aquamarine before. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with the uh, cat's eye neon blue appetite. I mean, that neon blue color is just amazing. And then to have a phenomenon uh, like cat's eye w along with it is just crazy. I mean, just take a closer look.
I just have to say, if you want to start your collection, a great way to start is with our parcels. So we have a variety of parcels. We'll put the links in the description below. Let us know if you get any. And honestly, let us know if any of you have a big collection or an even bigger collection yeah. than Bill's. Or if you have have one that we haven't seen or you yeah. didn't see today, I'd love to see it. So please share. Yes. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Thanks for watching.